Hey, good morning. So we decided we would do a little video to talk a little bit about the Dutch test. And uh, the Dutch test has been out now for at least a few years. And really, at patient requests, I've had a lot of our existing patients, um, I would, we'll, we're in a follow-up, and they'd say, hey, do you guys offer the, the Dutch testing? And after I heard that from enough people, we decided to go ahead and, and you know call the company so that we are now a provider for the Dutch test. So for those of you that have not heard of it, Dutch stands for Dried Urine Testing for Comprehensive Hormone. So that's where that comes from. Um, why test urine for hormones? I don't want to go into the details of it, but if you compare testing blood, testing saliva, and testing urine, there's benefits and drawbacks actually to all three, and you could argue why it's better to do one versus the other. And you'll hear a lot of arguments from the companies. You know, most of the companies that are doing saliva testing will explain why they feel like that's the best. Companies doing urine testing will say why they feel like that gives you more information, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't want to go into any more detail than that. I basically think all three has its place. Um, blood is actually perhaps my least favorite way to test. Um, we could probably do that in another video. But anyway, with the urine testing, one of the things that I really like about the Dutch test is you actually get the metabolites of the hormones. So not only are they gauging like where's the actual level of estrogen, where's progesterone, where's testosterone, but as these hormones are metabolized in the body and they percolate down into different metabolites, um, those metabolites are important. So specifically with estrogen, in general you can metabolize it down to a 16-hydroxy metabolite, a 4-hydroxy metabolite, or a 2-hydroxy metabolite. And of the three, the two is the safest, or the, or the good one. Part of that is genetic. Um, part of where they're percolating down to is nutritional. Cruciferous vegetables, actually, like broccoli, shift some of the metabolites toward the safe metabolite, uh, towards the 2-hydroxy. But the 4 and the 16 are considered kind of the bad metabolites. And some of this can be genetic, and so if, if a woman has a you know, strong family history of breast cancer, uh, uterine cancer, far back in their family, and yet is considering hormone replacement with estrogen, it's nice to know kind of where they're sending these metabolites. And if they're going to the bad, that's one more reason to be very cautious with replacement if you're going to do it at all. Um, so this is a test that can give you all that information in one test. And then there's different panels on there. The one I like is called the Dutch Complete because you also get some of the metabolites of oxidative stress, glutathione, and a couple of uh, B vitamin markers for B12, B6. Um, they're also looking at neurotransmitter metabolites to some degree, but we now know what you're really looking at is the gut because the microbiome is where most of these neurotransmitters are, are being made. So it's not a decent reflection of what's going on at the level of the synapse in, in the brain. But um, nevertheless, it's, I've been uh, pretty happy with the results of the patients that I've had that have done this test. I, I think it does have its, its place and its value. Um, let me show you the kit just real briefly. So basically this is the kit. comes in a little envelope. Um, the instructions for it, you know, paperwork to fill out, Fairly in-depth instructions in here. It, it walks you through how to do the test, but it basically contains these little packets. Um, you collect, you urinate on the packet, collect the urine, let it dry, put it in the envelope, and send it off. So, you know, very easy test to do, and that's the Dutch test. All right.